Once upon a time, in a world before Zoom, FaceTime, and Microsoft Teams, there was a popular software called Skype. It was the king of video conferencing and a pioneer in the world of online communication. People use it to connect with friends and family, collaborate with colleagues, and make long-distance relationships bearable. Skype was the ultimate tool for virtual togetherness. But then, something strange happened. Skype seemed to disappear from the spotlight. It became the forgotten grandpa of video conferencing as newer, flashier apps stole the show. It was a sad story, but not one without hope. Because Skype, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, made a comeback. This is the story of Skype. Let's go back in time and start from the beginning. In the year 2000, two brilliant minds, Nicholas Zenstrom and Janus Fries, were working on a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing application called Kazaa Media Desktop. Later, after three years, they thought to themselves, what if we could apply the same technology to something more wholesome like communication? And thus the idea of Skype was born. But what to call this newfangled communication tool? Skype here to here sounded like a pretty cool name, but it was a bit of a mouthful, so they abbreviated it to Skyper, only to find out that the domain names were already taken. No worries, they thought, let's just drop the R and call it Skype. Skype was revolutionary in a way that it provided almost free phone services to anyone with a downloaded program and an internet connection. You can make calls with other users of the platform, all without spending a penny. However, if you want to chat with landlines and mobile phones, be prepared to fork over a fee. Back then, when it came to internet calling, Skype was the bell of the ball. This software superstar united individuals across the globe, whether they were sharing gossip with their pals or conducting a meeting with their coworkers. It's also a godsend for companies searching for an economical method of keeping in touch with their staff and clientele. After its beta release in 2003, Skype took off like a rocket with Beta 2.0 in 2005, catapulting it to new levels of popularity. That same year, in a landmark transaction, eBay acquired Skype for a whopping $2.6 billion. During eBay's ownership of Skype, the app made incremental advances, but the company became increasingly disenchanted with its investment, losing millions of dollars every year. However, the Skype team didn't give up and continued to evolve the app shifting their focus towards sociability. And voila! In May 2006, Skypecasts were born, allowing up to 100 participants to use voice conversations that resembled chat rooms directed by a host who determined who could speak next. Fast forward to version 3.1, and Skype expanded to extended networks for businesses and organizations. But alas, even with all these upgrades, eBay decided to pull the plug in September 2009 citing a failure to maintain the expected minimum quality standard. However, this setback didn't keep the Skype team from creating a communication platform that would change the world. Skype's evolution over the years is like watching a caterpillar turn into a butterfly. Version 4.0 spread its wings with improved video calling and stunning 720p HD. But Skype 4.1 was the real game changer, introducing screen sharing and offering wireless internet access through Boingo. Later, a pay-per-use service called Skype Wi-Fi was born. And in 2010, it had its sights set on the mobile world, launching on both Android and iPhone the following year. Skype's wingspan continued to grow, reaching new heights with access to smart TVs, consoles, and Skype phones. With features like shared screen video calls and unlimited calls to one country, users flocked to the new platform. In 2011, Microsoft swooped in and acquired Skype for $8.5 billion. Microsoft gave Skype a makeover, transforming it into a mainstream messaging service. Skype's chrysalis had finally opened, and it emerged with a sleek, flat interface in the Bing search bar. And just like that, Skype had blossomed into a beautiful butterfly of online voice and video communication. To reiterate, Skype didn't achieve its success overnight, but gradually gained popularity over time. In April 2006, the number of registered users on Skype reached 100 million. By 2009, this number had grown significantly to 530 million, and then to 663 million by September 2011. 
Skype's fame skyrocketed during the mid-2000s, and the app even made it into the English language's vocabulary as a verb. However, a decade later, Skype was outclassed by newer apps like Google Meet, Zoom, and Microsoft Teams. A study reported that Skype held just 7% of the UK video conferencing market share in 2021, while Teams had 20% and Zoom had 55%. In the US, Skype had a meager 4% market share compared to Zoom's 60%. But the question is, what happened? Why did people all of a sudden lose interest? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Between 2010 and 2020, the launch of social media apps such as Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitch included video conferencing capabilities, making Skype's single-use service look obsolete. Furthermore, Microsoft's updates to Skype's features were considered unnecessary by users who wanted low-latency video and audio calling, leading to negative reviews and a plummeting App Store rating. Microsoft responded to customer feedback, but it was too late when the COVID-19 pandemic hit and people needed a reliable video conferencing app to communicate remotely. While Skype's focus shifted to social networking, people needed something simple and easy to use, and that's when Zoom took over. In just one year, between 2020 and 2021, Zoom's global market share increased exponentially. With a focus on delivering seamless communication, Zoom quickly won over users with its superior performance and security. Meanwhile, Microsoft struggled to find the right strategy for Skype, leaving the once dominant platform struggling to keep up. While Skype attempted to add new bells and whistles, Zoom went back to the basics, perfecting the core elements of video conferencing that Skype had let slide. And it paid off. Zoom's simple user interface and top-notch audio and video quality set it apart, and users flocked to the service, leaving Skype in the dust. Skype had it all, but it was the victim of bad parenting. After being adopted by eBay, it quickly became clear that the online auction giant was more interested in selling things than connecting people. eBay's lack of vision and failure to fully integrate Skype into its operations hindered its growth and led to internal conflicts. The founders left in a huff, and Skype was left to languish, gasping for air. Enter Microsoft with deep pockets and even deeper ambitions. They swooped in with a massive deal, hoping to capitalize on Skype's enormous user base. But instead of nurturing it, they suffocated it. In an attempt to outdo the competition, Microsoft added a bunch of unnecessary features that cluttered the interface and diluted Skype's core strengths. It was a classic case of too much, too soon, and Skype paid the price. Aside from all the hardships, Skype has come a long way since its early days, and in 2023, it boasts a whopping 300 million monthly active users. This is quite an achievement considering the competition and the changing landscape of digital communication. But what's the secret to its success? The answer lies in the new AI-powered Bing and Skype chat. Bing and Skype is not just a search engine, it's your personal co-pilot, providing you with comprehensive and creative sources of information, inspiration, and answers to your question, all through a simple chat interface. Whether you're looking for helpful tips, fun quizzes, or creative suggestions, Bing has got you covered. And the best part? Bing can communicate fluently in more than 100 languages, making it an invaluable tool for people from all over the world. Currently, the latest version of Skype is pretty easy to use. The interface is simple and setup is a breeze. Besides, even during the pandemic, Skype had seen a surge in its user count. And with 40 million daily active users from all walks of life, Skype is still going strong as a reliable and trustworthy platform for professional and personal communication. Skype once revolutionized online communication with its pioneering video call technology, but the landscape of productivity has since evolved. In 2023, new players have risen to dominate the market, and Skype's relevance has decreased. However, the secret to success in modern productivity isn't just about video calls. It's about seamless integration and enhanced collaboration features. Skype's legacy lives on, having paved the way for other great tools to come after it. But the question remains, can Skype rise from the ashes and reclaim its crown? It's a tall order, the competition is fierce, and Skype needs to offer more than just artificial intelligence to stay relevant. Yet, 
With the ever-increasing demand for productivity and technology's rapid development, who knows what the future may hold? Only time will tell if Skype can make a triumphant return to the top of the digital kingdom.